from the Fox 5 Studios. This is the Red Zone Sports Show. Jose Pizano with a chance to win the game from 28 yards. Reb Zone intro ever here at Fox 5. Welcome into the Reb Zone. I'm your host, Paloma Villacana, joined by UNLV football head coach Barry Odom. UNLV won a nail biter last night against Colorado State, 25 to 23, improving to 6 and 1. It's been 10 years since the Rebels have played in a bowl game, 29 years since they've won a conference championship in UNLV. All eyes on winning a Mountain West championship this season, 6 and 1, undefeated at home at Allegiant Stadium. It's been a big week here in Las Vegas coach yeah. what are your thoughts on last night's win well so happy for our kids and uh, they showed tremendous uh, mental toughness and resolve and guys made plays down the stretch uh, when we when we absolutely needed it either a third down conversion and then the the play of our special teams was huge throughout the course of the game we, we stayed in it um, you know got behind there in the first half but just kept staying the course uh, made plays when we needed to. Third down defense was was huge. Offense being able to extend on third downs, running the ball there late, and then some plays in that two minute drive uh, on the way we were able to protect the quarterback and get in position to go kick it to win it. Huge for our team. Yeah, a lot of highlights last night to show on both sides of the ball, but how about some highlights with your family after the game, post game? I think I mentioned, you know, you may have been hugged a hundred times last night post game. How good did it feel that support here in Las Vegas? Well, it's awesome. I mean, Vegas has, has become our, our home and, uh, you know, we've been fortunate that the number of places that we've been in, in coaching, um, we've had a lot of those people come visit the first few home games and um, you know excited for our team our program our city our university and uh, to be able to capture some of that uh, work so hard the organization works so hard to get into a moment to uh, have our student athletes have success and there's there's not much like that seeing the kids excited uh, understanding that the work they've put in we're getting some results from those things and uh, again the grit and resolve that they showed to come away with a tough win, really excited for our kids. Yeah, you said preseason Las Vegas is going to be a college football town, and it is a college football town as UNLV improves to 6-1, bowl eligible for the first time since the 2013 season. Let's head out to Allegiant Stadium tonight and look at the highlights from last night. The Rebels come out in their pink uniforms in support of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. UNLV looking to stay undefeated at Allegiant Stadium this season, getting ready to take on a Colorado State team coming off a 31 to 30 thriller over Boise State. Well, after a scoreless first quarter, Jose Pizano would boot a 42 yard field goal and put the Rebels ahead 3 to 0 to start the second quarter. The Rams and Rebels would trade field goals in the first half. Colorado State's 31 year old kicker Jordan Noyes would tie it up three to three. Next Rams possession Rams in the red zone. Braden Fowler Nicolosi pitches it to Avery Murrow who rushes left for his first touchdown of the season. Rams take a 10 to three lead. UNLV's defense coming up big on third down in the first half. Jackson Woodard with a big third down stop. The Rams would settle for another field goal and take a 13 to three lead at halftime. UNLV gets the ball to start the second half and talk about a big night again from UNLV's special teams. A 34-yard kickoff return from Donovan Lester, giving the Rebels great field position to start the second half. UNLV's drive to start the second half would end with a 43-yard field goal from Jose Pizano. The Rebels trail CSU 13-6. Pizano would score another field goal for UNLV, this time from 25 yards out, and the Rebels trail the Rams 13-9. Colorado State trying to get tricky. Fowler Nicolosi throws right to Tory Horton, who lobs it deep into the hands of Jackson Turner. His third pick of the season. Massive, massive momentum swinger.
Tiger in this ball game. Turner's INT would lead to a Rebel TD. Donovan Lester's seventh rushing touchdown of the season, 22nd rushing touchdown of the season for UNLV. The Rebels take their first lead of the game 16 to 13 after three. Pisano would kick his fourth field goal of the night and the Rebels extend their lead 19 to 13 over the Rams. Colorado State responds on the next drive. Fowler Nicolosi airs it over the middle to Justice Ross Simmons. Simmons able to break free into the end zone and Colorado State steals the lead 20 to 19 with 349 to play. Rebels bring out the special teams unit again on the next drive. UNLV with all the confidence in the world for number 18, Jose Pisano, who would boot his fifth field goal of the night from 46 yards out. Rebels back on top, 22 to 20. This game is coming down to the wire, but we saw another huge third down stop from Jonathan Baldwin all over Torrey Horton. And the Rams, Jordan Noyes would boot a career-long 55-yard field goal to give the Rams a one-point lead, 23-22 to with 40 seconds to play. Jaden Maiava would complete back-to-back 20-yard -back passes to Ricky White and Jacob De Jesus to set the Rebels up in field goal territory. Jose Pizano with ice in his veins can kick a field goal from the Las Vegas Strip. Game over. UNLV wins 25-23 to and is going bowling for the first time in 10 years. Allegiant Stadium goes wild for number 18, Jose Pizano, who kicked the school record six field goals in last night's win. Jose, what an amazing finish to tonight's game in front of your family. How special for you tonight. Uh, school record, most made field goals in a game with six. What was going through your mind in that game-winning field goal? Uh, I honestly just was like, whoa. <laughs> um, I just knew that we were going to be able to drive down the field and just get into field goal range. Um, so I was just kind of preparing myself mentally um, as that's kind of my job. I like. I only get so many reps in the field, so I have to have to be able to execute them every time. Your teammates screaming for you. How good does six and one feel right now, knowing that your team is going to a bowl game for the first time in ten years? Uh, it feels amazing. Um, you know, as I transferred here from an FCS school, we didn't have bowl games, so I just have told myself every day that you know I want to go to a bowl game. And like Coach uh, Odom said, um, that's just the, the minimum standard, you know. And we we're trying to accomplish uh, bigger things, and that's winning the Mountain West Championship. And I think we're in the right direction right now. Your family in the stands tonight, you told me it's a dream come true to play in this stadium. How special is tonight's win for you? Uh, very special. Um, having my family, my wife out there, it's, it's just amazing, you know, being able to play in front of them. Um, nothing can beat that. Just an incredible post-game interview with Jose Pizzotto, who has been elite this season. 18 for 19 on field goals, 6 for 6 last night, a perfect night for him. Uh, booting his way for the Rebels to win six games this season. Coach, we've said it all red zone long, special teams continues to win games for you. How much of an emphasis is it in your program? Yeah, it's huge, and we knew that needed to be uh, an X factor for us this year. and and. James Shebist and the staff on that side of the ball have done a tremendous job on, on developing uh, each week a schematic advantage for our team, but also the kids, the buy-in, the amount of work that they put into it, the understanding of field position, hidden yardage, you know, so huge those points were yesterday. You, you know, you get down in the red zone, you come away with points every time. Uh, it's really, really been instrumental for the start of the season. Yeah, it's just incredible to see UNLV shine on special teams and only improve each game this season. Well, bowl game eligibility is just the standard at UNLV. The Rebels are eyeing a Mountain West championship this season. We'll hear more from Jacob De Jesus and Jackson Woodard on the Reb Zone coming up next. You know, the ultimate goal is to win, be Mountain West champions and win a bowl championship. But, you know, we focus on being 1-0 each week, focusing on the team that we're playing that week. And, um, you know, I feel like that's what's really keeping us uh, focused and, you know, calm. Obviously, it's huge. You get 6-1. and one, uh, But like Coach said, it's a standard uh, to be bowl eligible. Um, and, you know, that's just our job. Our job's to win. Uh, winning's everything. So, you know, we take it week by week, go 1-0. Um, so, yeah. 
Jackson Woodard and Jacob de Jesus feeling that title town energy here in Las Vegas with their hopes and goals to win a Mountain West championship. I think I mentioned it's been 29 years since this team has won a conference championship back when UNLV was in the Big West Conference. But coach, what I've noticed this season is how together your team is on the same page, coming off the bus, walking onto the field. When we travel, you know, this team is focused on, on winning a championship this season. Well, they, they've really embraced what we're trying to get accomplished and they're they're running it. Um, you know, the, the terminology they're using, the things, togetherness that they're working on every single day. You know, you always, every team's different. And you've got 107 guys on this team and you've got to respect the cultural differences within the program. You become close as a team, you work so hard together. And we also understand that everybody in that locker room and in the organization has a role. And when everybody does their best job every single day and you do it consistently, then eventually success is going to follow that. I want to talk about Jacob De Jesus and the season high night he had last night. Nine catches for 120 yards. Jacob De Jesus quickly risen as a leader on this football team, having a big spring game with you guys. Uh, what impact did De Jesus have last night on special teams and on offense? Yeah, it's all purpose yards. A lot of those, you know, in the return game set us up field position wise to get the offense started mm -hmm. and to also to flip the field a lot of times. The things that I've said it before about Jacob, the way that he plays on Saturday is exactly how he practices mm -hmm. every single day. It looks like it's fourth and one and he's got to have the play uh, to win the game for us. That's yeah. the way he practices every single day. And uh, he is a tremendous competitor. Uh, every ounce that he has, he's going to pour into to doing his job for, for this team. And you're so right, Coach. The highlights we're seeing right now is exactly how he practices, and that's what I'm seeing at the UNLV football practices is what we're seeing show up on game day, but want to look at the defensive side of the ball. Some crucial third down stops for you guys last night from Jackson Woodard, even late in the fourth quarter. Talk about the defensive fight last night you saw from your guys. Yeah, I thought, number one, going into the game, we had Coach Shear and the defensive staff put together a really good game plan, mm -hmm. and I thought we had uh, opportunities there that gave us an advantage. And then within the game, he had to make some changes because they had some success running the ball. So we had to change some things. I thought we tackled well in the perimeter, which mm -hmm. was huge for us. Uh, we defended the deep ball a lot better uh, last night or yesterday uh, on progress that we've made in that area. And I thought we played better collectively as team defense looks on eliminating explosives, getting hats to the ball, and then making in-game adjustments. I thought our kids did a nice job of, of fixing issues uh, once they presented themselves, and then again, third down stops were huge for us. Yeah, Jackson Woodard coming away with a season high 14 total tackles. Defense once again playing lights out last night at Allegiant Stadium. Well, coming up next, we're going one on one with number four, Donovan Lester, who has racked up seven rushing touchdowns this season. The senior running back opens up to me about how his father's battle with dialysis and prostate cancer has made him into a strong leader and football player on the football field. Beautiful one on one with Donovan Lester coming up next on the red zone. You look at the UNLV football players and you see a confident group of young men playing for each other, playing for Barry Odom this season. To little kids here in Las Vegas, I'm sure they look like superheroes out on the football field. UNLV running back Donovan Lester has been a star for the Rebels this season, flashing his huge smile in the end zone seven times this season. The transfer from William and Mary opens up to me tonight on how his father's fight with cancer and battle with dialysis has led him to write two children's books hoping his story can make an impact on and off the field. I've had my best games with my parents have been at the game. Um, I'm just super excited that it's that they can come to a lot more games. You know, my dad, him having kidney failure, it was hard for him to come to games because he had to be on dialysis a certain amount of hours in a day. But since he got a kidney transplant, it's easier for him to come up to games. And it's a lot cheaper to get a flight to Dallas to Vegas instead of Dallas to Virginia. So it's, it's great seeing them, you know, at a lot more games. And when I'm on the field, seeing them in the stands, give me hope, give me courage, give me strength, you know, to continue to do what I do on the field. Your father getting sick, how did that change you and make you into a stronger person? You know, it's hard seeing, you know, my dad, you know, have to be on dialysis for four hours a day or, you know, seeing him have heart attacks or go through prostate cancer. But some, some things he always told me was he always just wanted to see me play football. And 
like I said, just seeing him in the stands, everything that he went through, you know, a lot of people don't make it through that. So seeing the strength and the courage and the brave, him being brave throughout everything that he went through, you know, kind of cor correlates to, you know, how I perform on the field because I know that he went through a lot worse stuff. So it's, it's a lot easier for me to go out and just perform and do what I do, you know, seeing, you know, everything that he went through. I want to talk about how your journey has kind of impacted the community. I know you wrote a book. Talk to me about your, your passion for the community. It's more, it's more than myself. You know, it's more than, more than being an athlete. You know, I'm not only just a football player. I want to, you know, inspire others to be the best that they can be, whether that is, you know, just talking, going to schools, reading books to kids, or that's just giving, you know, free crayons and stuff. So in my books, I want to incorporate, you know, how much, you know, being a charitable person and being more into the community, you know, has helped me throughout my life because it's great to see, you know, I want kids that want to go to college and want to play football do better than what I'm doing right now. And that just makes me happy, you know, helping someone else. So I, I try to live my life um, through t being a charitable person. We've only seen this offense improve week by week, but, um, you know, Coach Odom says the work isn't done. There's still so much for you guys to improve in, in all three phases. But what more do you want to see from this offense this weekend? This weekend, we just want to win the game, go one and zero. just have one more point more than Colorado State. You know, whatever comes, whatever happens, happens. You know, I feel like Coach Marion will put us in the right position. He knows how to put his playmakers in the right position and get the ball and make plays. So I'm definitely excited to see, you know, what he comes up with. You know, we have some new plays that we just added in. So I'm excited to see how we execute this weekend. A uh, beautiful story tonight from Donovan Lester. Coach, this is really my favorite part of the Red Zone is diving into these guys' stories and hearing about Donovan's father and his sickness and how that's only made him a stronger person, you know, just so inspiring to see. But what kind of man is Donovan Lester in your program? Well, he's certainly a, a tremendous, as you see, just the, the quick uh, piece on just a little bit of his background. Such a great story, uh, mature beyond his years and such a selfless player in our program that has become a tremendous leader. And his actions every single day, you know what you're gonna get. A uh, great worker and a tremendous teammate and, and is turning into uh, one of the elite ball carriers in college football. Yeah, I wanna look at his 2023 stats right here. Seven rushing touchdowns this season, three on the road against Reno and one last night against the Rams. You know, what consistency are you seeing and him only improving with you guys each week? He's gotten better each week and you know, the ability, as he mentioned, uh, the, the schematics that we come up with each week that Coach Marion and the staff on that side put together. Uh, our kids have done a great job on picking that up, mm -hmm. putting new things in, new wrinkles in that's gonna help our offense and he's running so physical he's getting behind his pads he's got tremendous speed you saw that last week uh, in you know the the long run that he had but he can run between the tackles he can break it outside in the outside zone world and and then he's a great uh, pass protection guy on third downs if we need to and he's got good hands out of the backfield he's got everything yeah. and uh, such a great player yeah 6 2 215 from Plano Texas a big running back who has been a star this season for UNLV well the Rebels are back on the road for the next two games Fresno State on the 28th and New Mexico on November 4th we'll hear more from coach Odom on the six and one Fresno State Bulldogs and how the Rebels will look to win six straight in Fresno the Rebzo returns after the break. UNLV football on the road for the next two games, packing their bags to Fresno State next Saturday. And then the following weekend, they'll be on the road in New Mexico, two road games. To me, Coach, your team looks locked in and really focused on winning a Mountain West championship this season. We need uh, we need a great week of preparation. Mm -hmm. uh, we understand the the importance, the focus that it takes to go on the road in this in this conference and win a game against a really really good team. Uh, I've got a lot of respect for Jeff Tedford. He's done it uh, at, at a very high level for a number of years, and I know. Uh, they're explosive on offense. Mm -hmm. A couple of different quarterbacks have played. They're really good on defense, attacking in every area, yeah. and uh, we'll we'll prepare really well. And then the elite focus that it takes uh, and determination to go on the road and play in an environment where uh, it's it's us against all of all of their fans and their team. It'll be a great week for us. Yeah, this is some highlights from their last win on the road at Utah State, 37 to 32. Uh, the Bulldogs are rolling this season. Coach, what sticks out to you on tape about them? Well, I think on offense, you look at what they do. They've got a great, 
game on the ground. Mm -hmm. They've got a really yeah. strong rushing attack. And then through the air, they're both quarterbacks that have played here of late uh, are making great throws. They've got a good group of, of receiving uh, core. And then I was really impressed with their offensive line in the games that I've watched so far on them. So a quality team. Uh, it should be a great showdown. And uh, it'll be the late game. It'll be uh, a lot of fun for our guys to be able to play under the lights. 7.30 p.m. kickoff. I already have some Rebel fans texting me that they will be at this game. But speaking of Rebel fans, Coach, want to give a big thank you to Rebel Nation out at Allegiant Stadium. Coach, what has the support been like for you and your Rebels this season? You know, yesterday in the stadium, we could feel it. And that's so exciting for our team, especially when we needed it down the stretch. They were loud on third downs, mm -hmm. and it was an environment that I think will continue to grow, and I'm so thankful for the progress we've made in that area, and our, and our fans uh, have made a difference in the way that we have played. I'm so thankful for that. Yeah, just great to see Rebel Nation so strong at Allegiant Stadium and on the road this season. It's been a sea of red in Reno and everywhere we go, so we can't wait to see Rebels fans next Saturday on the road in Fresno. We'll see you next Sunday on the Red Zone.